It's your worst nightmare as a marketer. Your emails are landing in spam and you don't know why. Your business as you know it is basically over, so you might as well pack up and get to work on your resume. Of course, I'm kidding because Lead Gen J is going to show you step by step how to identify why your emails are in spam and show you exactly how to fix it. But first, I want you to take a deep breath because landing in spam is basically a rite of passage for any email marketer. But when it first happens to you, it can be scary. It is the equivalent of a Facebook ads account being shut down or a YouTube channel being suspended. YouTube, please don't suspend me for saying there are 9,642 things that could be causing your emails to land in spam. And there is no support line to reach out to that can tell you why or how to fix it. But have no fear because I've been in the email doghouse more times than I care to admit. Okay, it's at least 20 times. And I'm here to tell you that there is always a way out of the doghouse. But fair warning, this stuff is a little bit complicated and can be very, very boring. If there was an expert to hire that could do this for me, then I would have hired him a long time ago. And believe me, I have looked. So do yourself a favor and watch this video as many times as it takes to understand email infrastructure and where things can go wrong and how to fix it. I'll do my best to use pictures to keep you entertained. Okay, here we go. All right, so here are all of the components involved in sending your email. You've got the email server, and email server, we're talking about things like Google, like Microsoft Office. All of these are different email servers. Some have higher trust, some have lower trust. That's why for beginners, I tend to advise them to go with Google or Office. There are a lot of companies and people out there that are telling you you can spin up unlimited mailboxes, send unlimited emails. Those are gonna be things like private AWS servers, which are newer and don't have a lot of trust and authority. So the email server is the first thing that can go wrong. Your entire server can be blocked, especially if you are on a private server. So if you're using something like MailForge or InfraMail, which are using these private mini servers, there's a very likely chance that the entire server can be blocked. The domain is also an important component here. So I recommend buying all your domains from GoDaddy. Where you buy your domain affects the R DNS, which is kind of stuck to the domain and is a really important factor in deliverability. So a lot of people who are having deliverability issues usually purchased their domains at a discount from something like Cloudflare or Namecheap. So where you purchase your domain actually matters. Just use GoDaddy to be safe. The DNS records are the different records that are set up on your domain, mostly to prove ownership of that mailbox and of that domain. Of the DNS records, so there are things like DKIM, DMARC, SPF, all of these records need to be included so that your email does not end up in spam. So domain setup is very, very important. The next thing is the mailbox. The actual name at, so for example, j at otterpr.com, that's the mailbox. And that mailbox is set up on the domain on the server. So all of these three things are connected and you could be blocked at any three of these levels. You could be blocked at the mailbox level, you could be blocked at the domain level, and you could be blocked at the server level. But if you're using something like Google or Microsoft, chances are it's not the server level. If your DNS records are set up correctly and you purchase it from GoDaddy, you're usually gonna be safe at the domain level, but it is entirely possible that an entire domain could be blacklisted. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So you send that email through the mailbox to the receiving server, which accepts that email. Now there's a couple things that can block your email in this process, the email copy and block lists. So the copy is actually re really important. A lot of these servers, the receiving servers, are trained to identify spammy copy. So if you say things like 100% or guarantee, these are cold email terms that it will identify and immediately block that email. Sorry, my handwriting is so bad. The other thing that can happen is the block list will intervene. So the block list will usually be an entire domain that is on a block list. These are things like spam hoss, and I'm gonna show you how to identify if you're on a blacklist in just a few minutes. You can always get off a blacklist, typically through sending good emails for a long period of time. But this is essentially how cold email infrastructure works. You wanna choose good servers, good domain. You wanna use Google or Microsoft Office, especially if you're new. If you're a good cold emailer, then you can try using these private servers. By good cold emailer, I mean your emails aren't getting reported as spam. You want to purchase your domains at GoDaddy. You want to have your DNS records configured correctly. You want to have all of these, th all of these factors, all of these codes 
in your domain and you want to send good emails through that mailbox, good email copy that does not get reported as spam. That way the receiving server will accept it and you will end up in their important box every time. Within this email copy, there's a lot of things that you don't want to do too as well. Uh, pictures, videos, HTML. The more basic the copy is, the better chance that it's going to be received. Now, once somebody replies to that email, you can send them whatever you want. But before you get the reply, be very careful. Copy only, if you're going to use links, please use links that have high trust scores, such as YouTube or Calendly, really generic, well-known domains. If you're sending links to your own website over and over and over again, it's gonna decrease the trust score and you can end up getting blocked by the receiving server. Did I lose you yet? If I did, please go back and watch that part again. Guys, this is a distilled version of how it all works. And I'm purposely leaving out a lot of details that you really don't need to fix your spam issue. So you're welcome. And now here's how to fix it. Lead Gen J's spam protocol. This is three steps and you can remember them as STD. The first thing that you're going to do is to stop your campaigns. If your emails are landing in spam, that means that something is wrong. And if you keep sending emails without fixing it, then you're going to make it worse. For example, if you are only in spam for one day, it's going to be much easier to fix the problem than if your emails have been landing in spam for three months. But don't worry, this pause is temporary. We're gonna have you emailing like an angry mom in no time. And now the hard part begins. We have to figure out what's actually wrong. And this is the T in STD. T is for testing. So let's walk through how to perform one of these tests and what to look for in the results. This is probably the most important part of the entire video and where most people go wrong. Anyone can run a test, but if you don't know what you're looking for, then it's really hard to interpret the results and actually fix it. But before I walk you through the tests, I want to reinforce what you probably already know. The main reason that your emails are landing as spam is because people are reporting them as spam. Nothing is going to replace sending good emails to people that are a good fit for receiving that email. So if you go through these tests and you can't find anything that's technically wrong with your setup, then your answer is to send better emails. Now, if you're struggling to get good responses from your emails, it might be because you have a boring offer or a complicated offer or one that's hyper competitive and commoditized and you know that your emails just suck then I encourage you to join my insiders program where I teach you how to think and how to develop great emails for even the lamest offers. And with that being said, even the greatest cold email on earth with the most awesome offer of all time, but to the wrong person is still going to end with your emails going to spam. You might hold the key to extending the life of somebody's dog by 10 years, but if you send that email, to the local slaughterhouse worker, it might not be received so well, you're gonna to go to spam. So the moral of the story is to send good emails to people that actually want to receive that email. And yes, it's harder than it sounds. All right, now let's walk you through how to actually perform these tests and what tools to use. Okay, I have here my Instantly account. Now you could be using any tool on earth. You could be using Smartly. This could be for your primary domain. You could be on Active Campaign or Go High Level. It doesn't matter. The tests will remain the same. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is check the warm up health score. If you're not warming up your email, you need to be. I don't care if this is your primary email that you're using just to your warm leads, you should still be warming your email. I like like instantly is warming. They do a really good job of preserving their warm up pool, their warm up circulation. So it's good, healthy warming, but you can also use something like warmy.io for even more protection. Okay. So as you can see, my health score is all 100. This one's at 94. You're going to want to run through and check these first. Just make sure that your health scores are all good. The other thing that you're going to want to do is test the domain setup. There's a couple ways to do this, but instantly makes it very easy. This will make sure that all of the emails have MX records, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. These are those DNS records that are at the domain level. So make sure that those are set up correctly. Now we can run into a little bit deeper testing. Now, if your emails are ending up in spam, check the analytics on your campaign. If you're getting no opportunities, no replies, or it's all negative, then it's probably not a good sign for your deliverability. It probably means a lot of people are marking you as spam. So that's a good way to tell if you're sending good emails to the right people. You can also come into leads and see how many unsubscribes that you're getting, how many bounces that you're getting. And you really wanna keep these numbers like under 5% for unsubscribes and bounces, each under 5%, so 10% total. 
If you're high on those numbers, chances are you're getting reported as spam. The next thing that we're gonna do to test, let's come into sequences and see how our copy is. So like I said, you wanna avoid using copy that triggers spam detection. So anytime you do any copy, you should come to this website, mailmeteor.com slash spam dash checker and paste your copy in there to see if you're getting a good score. Now that's obviously a variable. You want an overall score of great. If you have words that are being flagged here, change those words. This is a really simple test that you should do before launching any new campaign. Now a more in-depth test. Let's go to this preview function. And here instantly allows us to check deliverability score and we can also send test emails. An email is actually going to receive it from the mailbox in question. So this is where we're gonna test the mailbox in question. So imagine I'm having issues with j at cmoj.com. I'm gonna go ahead and check the deliverability score it's going to send this email to receiving emails and it's gonna generate a report. Obviously you want it to be perfect, but let's go through and see what is analyzed here. So it's gonna analyze the SPF records, the DNS records. It's going to analyze the body for HTML, code, links, and you're gonna lose points on all of these things. It's gonna analyze if you have a DKIM record, if your DKIM is valid, all of these things are gonna to be told to you here, but this is not a very in-depth test. This is an easy free one, but there's something better that I would like you to do. So let's come into preview again. And instead of sending to, oh, sorry, this is sending from this. So this is the one that we're testing. We're gonna send to a different email address here. If you are looking for a great free tool to test deliverability, come to mail-tester.com. This is free unlimited mail testing. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this email address. I'm gonna paste it in here. And now I'm gonna send test email. Now mail tester is going to receive it and I can check my test score to see that my email was received and if there's any big flags on my email. So here I got a 9.5 out of 10, that's very good. I'm not block listed. So this is going to test your email against all of these different block lists. Some really common ones that you can end up on are Spam House, Host Karma, Sorbs. Now these block lists are temporary. You typically don't stay on these forever. A lot of times it's time-based and it's based on how many people are reporting you as spam. So if you're in spam, this will tell you if you're on a block list, this could likely be why. Message is safe and well formatted. So if you have a lot of risky links, other content, it will tell you here. And you can take action by fixing what it tells you to fix. Now you can also learn a lot about how to format emails well from what it is testing here. No images, content is safe, short URLs. It has a list unsubscribe, properly authenticated. So it's got all the records set up correctly. Spam Assassin likes me, that's great. Spam Assassin is a third party that assigns scores to these emails. This is very, very important. All right, so one of the most powerful tools that I'm gonna show you for testing is glockapps.com. So you can sign up for a free account and you'll get two free tests. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start test. I'm gonna test all in North America. Obviously, if you're testing in a different country, go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and create this test. Now, in order to use Glock apps, you're gonna need to copy this ID. I'm gonna test it using my personal mailbox just to show you how it works here. And I'm gonna put, hello there, this is a test, subject testing, one, two, three, and then let's grab all of these emails that it's going to go to. This is the seed list. So the seed list is going to include Yahoo, it's going to include AOL, Gmail, Outlook, so this way we can see exactly how receiving servers are receiving our emails. So once I send that, I'm gonna go ahead and view report. Now this can take a while for the results to generate because all of those different mailboxes, receiving servers are going to start receiving it and we're gonna start getting analytics on those emails. So the message has been sent and now you can see that it has started to receive emails. Let's give it just a second to process those results. All right, very interesting results. So this is why it's important to see how these work and then re-verify. So I actually got 28% going to spam and eight block lists. So these block lists do somewhat matter, uh, but not always. What really matters here, RDNS, again, this is where, I, where the domain was purchased. We're gonna check domain block list, DKIM, we already verified those. Now what's important here, spam filters, we, we passed all of these, that's great. What I like to see is how it's delivering to each individual mailbox. So I saw here that they're being blocked by Outlook. So what I'm gonna do next is send an email, a normal email from my mailbox to an Outlook mailbox. It could have been that ID code, it could have been that it said test, but this is an important note and something to look into. Is it being blocked by these providers and why? 
Quick update to the test. So I actually ran that same Glock apps test on J at leadgenj.com and it said 0% deliverability to Outlook. So I threw it in warmy.io. It's by far the best warm up tool, but not cheap. Uh, and here's what I found for deliverability. DNS score, 10 out of 10. Email deliverability test is 10 out of 10. So 100% are going to Outlook. So it was likely the ID within the email copy that it was getting flagged by Outlook. So really interesting take, and this is why you need to do multiple tests. A lot of different things can go wrong, and there's a lot of different tools that you can check against one another to try and get to the bottom of it. Uh, so if you are getting inconclusive tests, you might wanna consider using warmy.io, especially if it's a primary domain like leadgenj.com. That one actually freaked me out for a second. So I brought it in here and now my nerves are calm. Okay, so now we've identified what's wrong. It's time to apply the solution. And fixing deliverability issues is a lot like dermatology. If you don't know anything about medicine, here's a little bit about how dermatology works. Sorry, dermatologists. Patients will come in with a mysterious rash. And the dermatologist's job is to figure out what disease is causing the rash so that they can do cultures and biopsies. They'll look at it under a microscope. And most of the time, they'll come up with a name for it. They'll call it dyshydrotic eczema or something. But after all that work and expertise, the treatment is almost always the exact same thing. Either steroids or fungal cream, usually both. And I bring this up because no matter what is causing your emails to go to spam, the solution is always going to be pretty much the same. Stop your campaigns and warm up your mailboxes for two weeks, and then you do the D. The D is for deliverability, because you're not going to start sending cold emails from that mailbox again until that mailbox has perfect deliverability. You're gonna run those same tests again every two weeks until that mailbox is healthy. Now there is a chance that mailboxes will take a long time to recover, and when this happens to us, we typically create more mailboxes and more domains utilizing different servers to hedge our risk of this happening in the future. All right, I hope this guide was helpful. And if you're interested in learning more about the technical setup of emails, I did a free course explaining DNS records and technical email infrastructure for all of those nerds that wanna dive a little bit deeper. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel to become a better marketer. And you can watch that technical course by clicking on the thumbnail somewhere in this video. I'll see you next time. Lead Gen J out.